Hi there, it's Tim, G5TM again, and uh, today we're going to have a look at making a very simple and really effective and lightweight 2 meter portable antenna. Thanks for joining me. Uh, if you're a regular, then welcome back and nice to have you back with me. And if you're somebody who's just stumbled across my channel for the first time, then also welcome to you. And if you like what you see, then click that notification button and a subscribe button as well. It'd be great to have you on board. Anyway, today then, what are we doing? Well, we're looking at uh, making a really lightweight and cheap antenna. Here's the, uh, here's the specimen here uh, for working portable on the two meter band. And the one I'm going to show you here is a tried and tested design made entirely out of RG58 coax. One run of RG58. So this, the construction is pretty simple, very easy to follow. And I'm just going to show you how I put it together. Now I'm not going to actually go and make one and bore you to tears as I slice up things and cut things and put things together. I'm not going to do anything like that. I'm going to show you the finished article and just describe to you how to do it. It's very simple, all right? And in fact, it must be simple because I've made it. And then I'll show you how well it tunes with the SWR and everything. And in a later video, uh, hopefully this weekend, today is Wednesday afternoon. So hopefully uh, Saturday or Sunday, I'll get out portable for a couple of hours and uh, put her through the tests, okay? And uh, see how she does. Anyway. Enough about that, let's discuss then how to make it and uh, I'll show you um, how to do that. Now before we start with the look at the antenna, today's picture has been brought to you by my daughter. It's a cat. I think it's meant to depict Alvin, our tomcat here at home. So um, in case you're wondering what on earth I've been doing, this isn't my handiwork, honest. It was hers, I hope you appreciate it. Now trying to block the cat too much when I go through the rest of the video. On we okay, go. So the antenna itself. I started off with a run of 7 metres of RG58 coax, measured down from the end and measured down 45 and a half centimetres, 455 millimetres, okay, from the end. What I did, measured down to there and then cut off the uh, outer shield and the inner braid. So you're just left with the inner dielectric on the top, 45 and a half centimetres. You then measure down from the point where you've uh, got the end of the dielectric meeting the original jacket there, you measure down from there a further 44 and a half centimetres, 445 millimetres. So just to recap those measurements, 45 and a half centimetres for the top bit with a removed shield and the removed braid, 44 and a half centimetres from the point where you've got that uh, coax resuming, the outer shield resuming, and make a mark down at 44 and a half centimetres. Now at this point you haven't got the choke involved yet, okay? Then what you do is to prepare the choke. And what the choke basically is, and by the way, the choke is designed to stop any common mode coming back down the coax into your, into your radio, okay? And improves the tuning. So what you have here, what I've used, is uh, electrical uh, conduit, uh, 25 millimetre PVC, and I've cut off about 10 centimetres. This is a 10 centimetre runner pipe. And then I've drilled two holes, both of which are around two centimetres in from the end, okay? And what you then do is thread the coax up this way. So you put the top of the coax through one of the holes, thread it up until you get to the point where that 44 and a half centimetre mark I mentioned just now just gets into the hole, just the other side of the hole, so up there, just inside. And then what you do is you then know that you've got the right position to start winding the choke. Now before you even do that bit, the one bit I haven't told you yet, is to hold the choke nice and tightly together. It needs to be very tightly held. I sellotaped two um, uh, cable ties, zip ties, okay? to the actual pipe before I wound the choke. And I made sure they didn't cover the holes. They were adjacent to the holes. You can see the holes are there. And then you've got one, two, see the holes are here, look, and you've got one and then the other cable tie there. And it was sellotaped across, so they were sticking out either end, okay, evenly. And then 
once you wind the choke, you just wind the coax round, and you should get, by the way, around 10 complete turns, okay? Not counting the one that goes in and the one that goes out. 10 complete turns there, okay? You put the, once you get to, to the last hole, you put the other end of the coax through and pull it through. Pull the both ends as tight as you can, and then you make sure then that you get the both ends of the cable tied together and tie them up. All right, so you're just making sure you're keeping the coax together like that. Now, all this bit is here from the from the choke down. All this is basically is feed line. So you can have as much of this as you want. You can have literally just that much if you want to, and then put like a PL259 or an SO239. You can solder that on. You can have any run of coax you want. You can have really nice thick coax coming off that. That could be a good way of doing it if you're doing it from home. If you're using this as a sort of temporary home antenna. I basically though have ensured because I've used seven meters of coax, I've got about a five meter run of this going down to my PL259 plug. What that means is I can use this portable very easily. I put it up a fiberglass pole, tape it on there, or use a, use a cable, use a little um, one of these Velcro ties, okay, or a couple of them. That hangs down then, okay, like this from the top, and then your feed line just comes down the pole and into your operating position, into your car, whatever, whatever it is you're operating. This is a really good antenna to take up a hill, so you can strap this to a, uh, a fence post, or st even strap it onto the trig if you want to, with a fiberglass pole, say a six, seven meter fiberglass pole or something like that, really light. Strap this on, into your radio, and bingo, okay? So that's the antenna, really easy to use, simple. So just, and to make I should say, so just to confirm the measurements, 45 and a half centimetres for the top bit, with everything removed to the inner dielectric, 44 and a half centimetres to the point where it just meets the, the hole, the top hole of the choke. Before you do that bit, remember to sellotape those two, temporarily sellotape the two cable ties, start winding your choke, get it through the last hole, pull it tight, you should have about six centimeters between the two holes. So you should have 10 complete turns. Let me just hold that in case you want to pause it, look. 10 complete turns, not including the two end ones there. Once you've done that, pull it tight, get the cable ties together, pull them tight, cut off the excess so it looks nice and tidy. That should keep the choke nicely together. Put the coax through, we've done it already, and then put a PL259 on the other end of it. And that is literally the antenna, all right? The measurements are pretty critical. You've got to get them fairly near the ball, ballpark because um, obviously, you know, a couple of inches at HF doesn't matter a great deal, but, you know, five centimeters of VHF will severely detune your antenna. So you've got to get it pretty well on the money. If you're a millimeter or two, it's not going to matter much at all. The good thing about these antennas is they're pretty forgiving in terms of SWRs. We'll see in a moment. They're fairly broad banded, which is a good and a bad thing because uh, you know it does mean that it's not the, not the massively the most efficient antenna in the world but what you have basically is an n-fed half wave okay it's a half wave it's a vertical dipole most of the radiation will come off the center the choke here is basically going to stop any common mode and this is your you know this is your feed line okay it's as simple as that the cost of the antenna to make well Seven meters of coax, you can use less of course, like I've said, but say seven meters of coax, about three pounds fifty, because it costs about fifty pounds, near enough fifty dollars, for a one hundred meter run of RG58. I think that's how much it is anyway, so about three quid. Um, because I'm using ten centimeters of a two meter pipe that costs two pounds, this costs ten p, so that's three pounds sixty. PL259 was about a pound, quite a cheapy one, but there we are. 460. If you wanted to make this really nice, you'd put some heat shrink over it or something. Um, of course, you're not counting the tiny bit of solder you're using to put the PL259 on. Let's round it up. Five pounds. Five dollars for this antenna. That's all you need. Okay? And the good thing about these, this, this design is, it's based on the T2LT, which you've become from an 11 meter background you'll have heard of. And effectively, you can ups, upscale this for any frequency, probably up to about 20 meters. Once you start designing one for 40 meters, that's a long, it's a long antenna. But um, for this sort of antenna, you can go from 70 centimeters up to 20 meters. So this is a cinch to make, really easy. You can do this and knock one of these out in half an hour, first time you do it, and it'll take a lot less after that. Just get the measurements right with the holes here, the choke, 
get the measurements right but we cut it in the coax after that's an absolute doddle for you okay so what we're going to do now i'm going to put this onto the uh fishing pole we're going to have a look at uh well, i did it earlier actually we're going to look at how it how it is actually mounted and have a look at the swr and then hopefully what we'll do then is just run things up and uh then in a later video i'll take her out to have a look to see how well she does so first things first let's see how she's uh how i put her up on you know, put her up in the air and uh how well she does in terms of swr so here's the antenna strapped to the uh, seven meter pole, actually strapped to the six meter point there. Fiberglass, of course, non-conductive pole. That's the feed line coming down off the choke. And there it is uh, going into the uh, SWR meter. So let's see then how well this antenna tunes. 144 megahertz, hardly a flicker on the meter. At 145 megahertz, 1.1 to 1. And at 146 megahertz, just over 1.2 to 1. But in a previous video, um, we looked at how using thin coax is really lossy on VHF. Um, now, th that's certainly the case with a long run. Um, with a 5 meter run, you're looking at a loss of around 0.9 dB, which is not 0.9 dB, but it's not a massive, massive issue. Um, there's a trade off here between uh, loss performance and portability and the ability just to take us up a hill so easily because it's so lightweight you could roll this up into a rucksack job done so there's a trade-off to be had but i think it'll work really well and look forward to trying it so i'll do that video over the next few days i hope you enjoy it and i hope you've enjoyed this one too and if you want to click that subscribe button if you haven't done so already it'd be great to have you on board thanks for uh, stopping by then Good luck with your portable antenna building too, and uh, I hope to catch you on the next next one. This is Tim, G5TM, wishing you 7.3, and good luck. Bye-bye.